Hello everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe and I'm back with a directory opus tutorial as requested by one of my regular followers. My regular viewers has asked me if I could show you how to change the background color of a lister given a given folder. So this is the sort of workflow where you may have folders such as uh, photos and within you have animals, people and things. And sometimes it's very easy when you start delving into folder hierarchy to get lost into not quite remembering where you are. And you'll have to go up here and consult your breadcrumb trail. Say, ah, yes, I'm in photos, animals, cats, male cats, whatever, um, or ferrets in this case. Uh, so there's all sorts of possibilities for using these uh, color codes. But I'm going to show you how to do not only uh, color code personalization here, with your folders, I'm going to show you how to do a lot more than just that. So we're going to go ahead and start off with photos. So photos, as you can see, the column headers here aren't really designed for photos, right? I mean, you got file type. If you were to go in here, you'll see there's JPEGs or PNGs or whatever. But really, when you're working with photos, you need to see a lot more. So we're going to go ahead and right click up here and we're going to go to more. And the first thing we're going to do is go into some some photo or picture uh, columns and we're going to add them over here real quick while we're already here. Right. So we're going to go ahead and add physical height, physical width, maybe a bit rate. And under picture metadata, I'd like to know um, maybe the date that it was taken. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that and see what it looks like. OK, so now you see that we have. Uh, a handful of other columns here. Of course, there's no pictures in here. And if we go in and grab a picture, up, oh, see, now we get we go in here and we can actually see the information. So let's go back in there again. And now we have the uh, displayed fields. Let's go ahead and work on that color option. So if we go over to options, you'll see under image, there's a fill color. And for uh, all of our, for my main photos folder, I'm going to do something of the green persuasion. I'm going to go ahead and make it sort of a light green. All right, and I'm going to apply. Perfect. So now my, all of my photos have a green background, at least in this particular photos folder. I'm going to go ahead and save this folder format. I'm going to replace the folders format in any other layouts or save tabs, and I'm also going to save for all subfolders. All right, I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK again. So if I go into Animals, everything remains green. If I were to say go to my C drive, of course, it goes back to its regular color. So now we've got uh, colors all the way down, and we've got this very nice um, list of column headers. Now, you're probably thinking, well, It'd be really nice, instead of having to do this little hover over thing, if we could just go ahead and put ourselves into a thumbnail view. Let's go back to Photos, go back to More again. And if you start thumbing through these, uh, these tabs here, you're going to see all sorts of possibilities. How to keep the folders sorted, keep folders on top. There's all sorts of good stuff you could do here, including things, which is one of my favorites, which is get folder sizes automatically. I really like this, and I'll, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, so now we have colors set. We have the column names that we want, right? And we would like to go ahead and select the view as. I'd like to go ahead and view these as large icons. All right, I'm going to hit apply, but that doesn't really do anything. I'm also going to hit save and make sure I go ahead and overwrite everything so I don't lose any of my settings. So now when we go into photos and animals, uh-oh, that's strange. Hmm. So let's go back in. Let's go see what we might have done wrong here. We actually want these as thumbnails. Go ahead and save again just to make sure. All right, now we're talking. Perfect. All right, so... Not only have we managed to get the proper columns, if we were to stay in, a, in that mode, of course, when you're here, you don't obviously get to see any of those. We can always flip back to details and get that data. But we do have exactly the colors we want. So now let's say uh, photos are all green, but we would like to get a little more specific. So we'll go into Animals. We're going to go into More. 
we're going to go into options. You know, for animals, I would like to um, I would like to have a different color. So for animals, I would like animals to be red in color. All right, perfect. And we're going to go ahead and save because this is going to save it for photos animals. Right? Okay. So now our color changes are happening just like we would expect them to. Photos, photos are green. Animals in particular are red. And if we really wanted to drill down, you can see I've already put in this ferret folder from an earlier uh, recording, I actually changed that fill color to purple. You'll also notice though, that the column headers are missing. They're here, but they're not in here. And the reason is I already had a folder override for ferrets before I uh, modified the parent photo. So when you're doing this sort of hierarchical uh, changing of colors and, and all that, start at the very top level folder, right? Perform your settings. Then go to the next level, perform any alternative settings. And then finally, each time you go in, you'll also notice that we're in uh, details mode. You can always go and you're probably saying, well, how can I clear that out? Um, so I could go to ferrets and I could go here. I can go ahead and clear the saved format for this folder. Okay. And now you'll see that because I've cleared that ferrets is now uh, adopting the animals, which is adopting the photos layout, at least part of it. We overrode the animals, but ferrets no longer has its own per folder override. And uh, there's all sorts of great stuff you can do with these, these column headers. Oh, and let me go back here. Um, let me go back into details mode. And you can see that my sizes are automatically being calculated for me. So this is kind of nice. And that was, if you remember, that's the setting that we did um, uh, we did here with get folder sizes automatically. I know you can, if you're going into another folder, right? You can hover over uh, and get file sizes calculated for you. So there you go. Here's how you can customize your folders, background, columns, and all sorts of good stuff, as well as applying that downstream to subsequent folders. Now, one of the things that people are probably going to ask is, let's go ahead and turn off thumbnails. Let's go back to details. I'm a details-driven kind of guy. Of course, I didn't save it. Let's just go ahead and make sure I save this before I overwrite it somehow. And you'll notice, though, that when I did make that change, it any uh, subfolder that has its own override did not adopt it. So animals continues to be in thumbnail view. So you got to kind of learn how the hierarchy works here. Now, if I go into things, things is still adopting from photos where animals has its own override. So we're going to go to things. And you can see this is pretty cool. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're still in green because it adopted from photos. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, what if I have very specific formats that I would like to track? So right now, uh, for example, we have cover.jpg in here along with a bunch of other cover uh, image files. Maybe you'd like this file to stand out. Maybe you would like certain types of, or certain file names to stand out. Or maybe you just want to change the look of the fonts or label colors here. Let's take a look at how you can do that. So we're in things now, which is uh, adopting from the photos changes. So let's go in here. We're going to go to labels. Now there's nothing here and it's actually kind of like, uh, okay. <laughs> so what does this actually do? Well, let's go and add a label filter and we're gonna call this covers. All right, and we're going to select a red label. Oop. Well, that didn't quite work out right now, did it? So we didn't add a clause. So it's gonna assume that you want all of these colors to be red. But let's go ahead and add a filter. And we're going to add a filter that says cover.jpg. It's more helpful if I actually type it correctly. There we go. So now we have a label filter that will actually apply 
a colored label to whatever that filter is, in this case, cover.jpg. So you've seen this sort of thing in play when you, when you go to, say, a system folder and you see system files are in a certain color while the rest of them remain another color. And you could, of course, do this absolutely. You could do this with wildcards and just say asterisk.jpg if you only want to see JPEGs in the red color. Uh, in this case, it'd be all of them, but if for whatever reason, let's say we rename this to PNG, which, you know, that's not the way to do it, but and then we can add another filter called uh, PNGs. We can add ourselves another filter clause here and say PNG, use wildcards, right? And we're going to make these, uh, if we make them green, you're not going to see them purple. There you go. Now you'll notice that our, uh, we could, no, let's go back in and do that again here. Let's make our covers back to cover.jpg. There we go. There. Now we have some very disparate colors. Anything that we're really not super interested in stays black. We're very interested in our cover JPEGs, and we're also interested in seeing what files may still be here that are in PNG format. Well, this one's not. I just renamed it, but you get the idea. So this is how you can take complete control on a per folder basis. Now see what happened here? I forgot to save, so that's on me, right? Go back to our labels, and I did not save them, so now I'm gonna pay the penalty. Let's go back in here real quick, and we'll just make the cover one again. Always save, always save, and we're gonna make that a red label. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and save, and we will replace all the downstream folders, which there isn't any. There we go. So now we're good. So I go to photos and back to things. You'll see that my filter is being set as appropriate. Now, you know what you're thinking. How can I make my own colors? I don't necessarily like those default ones. And you can, right? So what you have here is a selection of uh, existing uh, color labels, but you can see over here, you can go to edit labels. So let's say that you're working in a dark theme and you want a bright white or you want a bright yellow you can go ahead and add your own labels. So let's call this yellow. And uh, you can, uh, there's all sorts of things you can set here, but for the sake of argument, we're gonna say that all unselected text is yellow and selected text is yellow. It's gonna be ugly, but you know, listen. All right, so now we have a yellow. And for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and make this a darker background color of some sort. That way the yellow kind of stands out on it. Boy, my color choices are very, very poor. <laughs> there you go. So you get the idea. So let's go ahead and add that new filter here. And we're going to go ahead and do the PNG one again. And we're going to add a wildcard asterisk.png. And there's our yellow label. Awesome. Apply. Okay. There you go. And I didn't save it, of course. So the second I leave here and go back in, I lost it. But uh, make sure you're saving frequently. Did you get the idea? Listen, I hope this video helped you out. Please like the channel, subscribe, and of course hit that notification bell. If you have special requests of things you'd like to see done with Directory Opus, let me know. I'd be happy to shoot a video for you. I'm Shane R. Monroe, and it's, as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care.